So I thought we'd talk about right speech. I think the name of this video is Speak Kindly, and I wanted to name it that because it's important. When we are living together in close quarters, it's really important how we speak to each other. Um, the Buddha lived with a bunch of monks, and it made him very concerned about how people interact with each other, especially using speech. I used to, uh, I like to say that the Buddha spoke about speech probably more than any other topic, which I think is ironic and kind of funny. But it's important because the way you speak and the way you act are how people judge you. It is how people decide if you are reliable or not. It's how people decide what they're going what they're going to spend time with you doing, for example. Or if you are a person who is trustworthy, speech develops a lot of karma, as do actions. Um, whether or not you are your speech and whether or not you are your actions is a different class and we'll, we'll get to that eventually. But what you say today, in this moment, right now, matters. And how you say it also matters. There are four parts, four parts, to write speech. Um, one is easy enough. Um, the Buddha said, just don't lie. And that's a simple one. Um, it's easy to explain, you know, lying gets you into a lot of negative karma, you know. Um, once you're br branded a liar, even if you have stopped lying, maybe you told a lie for one reason, and then for the le next 10 years, you didn't tell any, any lies. The people who remember the lie you told are still going to remember you as a liar. So that's the easiest explanation for why not lie. Um, the other ones are... Um, we want to be careful with our speech. We want to make sure that it is non-harming, that it is non-aggressive, that we are, that our that our words are kind. Um, a woman named Sylvia Bornstein. Uh, I can't really remember the correct spelling of her name, uh, but I will try to link one of her books down in the. She said, she says, you know, um, make your words short and sweet because you may have to eat them. And <laughs> I don't know about eating your words, but I do know short, sweet, kind words will get you in, in and out of uh, difficult situations. When you have to have a conversation with someone, and in days like these, we will be having a lot of difficult conversations, it is important to know some steps to keep your words sweet. One of the ways I do it is I call it the compliment sandwich. It really works great on teenagers. Um, I used to be a high school teacher. I actually taught almost all grades, but I, used to be, I was a high school teacher for a period of time. And one of the things that, that I learned is um, if you give them a compliment, then tell them what it is that you need them to do or, to, or give them the correction of, you know, their behavior. For example, you know, um, um, hey, thanks, out, thanks for helping out yesterday with whatever it was. Um, today I really need you to um, be more attentive to your little sister. Um, she's getting bored. Can you spend at least a couple hours a day with her? And um, another compliment, whatever that is. Hey, you know, you look great today. Thank you for keeping your music down, whatever. But there's a compliment to begin the conversation because that gets their attention, you know. And make sure you're smiling while you're doing it. And then give them the instruction or the correction or whatever but then end with the compliment because they are much more likely to stick around for the next conversation if you get into the habit of doing this. They may not even get through the correction the first time, but it's a good habit to get into because they know that you that eventually figure out that you're going to end with a compliment. You're going to end with something that they want to hear. 
So begin with something that they want to hear to get their attention, give them the correction or the instruction, and then end with the compliment. It's much easier to, uh, to have that conversation that way than to just tell people what to do. It is. Um, the other is no idle speech. So the Buddha was really concerned with people just sitting around talking just to be heard, just to, just to be talking. One of the things that having um, so many screens has done, um, because you know I'm old enough to remember the world before all of these mobile devices and things, is that there were a lot of people who would be like on the bus or whatever who would just be talking. You know, they would just be talking just because they wanted to fill the dead air. They wanted to keep things going. They wanted something to be out there. But now with all of these screens, there's a lot less of that. And so I don't know um, how, I know that Buddhism adapts to the, the times and the place that it shows up. So eventually this will adapt too. But no idle speech, you know, um, that was, that's one of the four. And the last one is not to gossip. And there's a definition for that too. The definition is don't speak about people who are not present. Now, there's tons of exceptions to this one, tons, tons. You know, if you're a parent and you're speaking to another parent, you're co-parenting a child, of course you have to speak about that child when they're not around. If you're a doctor and you're speaking to another healthcare professional, of course you're going to talk about the patient when they're not around. But there are a lot of times where we're just talking about people behind their backs, and that's gossip. The other things could come under gossip. You know, use your own discretion. You know when you're when you're when you're talking about something that's serious business and has to be discussed, as as opposed to speaking about someone behind their back just because you can. In close quarters, gossip can hurt a lot of feelings. It really can. You know, I, um, I, used, I was in the Army, and this girl who I thought was a really good friend of mine, you know, when you're in the Army, you're really young. You're just now leaving your family, you know, so the people that you meet in basic training or whatever become really close to you. I think they do that on purpose so that, you know, you'll be, you'll be a tight-knit group. It, it, it does work. Anyway, I thought this woman, a uh, young lady, was a very good friend of mine, and I overheard her talking about me behind my back. And it, it hurt my feelings. It really did. Um, I didn't confront her about it. You know, I didn't jump on her about it or anything like that. I just had hurt feelings. And that's because she was gossiping. And she was probably just having fun. She probably was not. She, she certainly didn't intend for me to hear it. That's a given. But she probably wasn't even saying anything that the older, wiser Kathy would have even thought was something to worry about. But the young Kathy was just worried about the fact that this person, who I respected as a friend, would talk about me behind my back, regardless of what she was saying. Unless she was complimenting me, I just, it hurt my feelings. And she was not complimenting me. And that's the kind of stuff that, that you want to avoid, especially in close quarters, because when you're living right on top of each other, hurt feelings last a long time and reverberate throughout the house. So you want to be careful about that and you want to speak kindly. And another way to speak kindly is to not correct people in front of other people. It doesn't matter who, little kids, grown-ups, whatever. If it's something that can wait, let it wait. If it's something that can't wait, you know, that's a thing too. You know, that's... Um, that's the truth too. Like if, if a child is about to hurt herself, of course you're going to yell at her and get her to put down the knife. Don't put don't put glass in your mouth. You know, stop running up and down the stairs. And well, running up and down the stairs, you can probably if she gets down safely, you can take her to the side. But if it's not about safety, I think that it's something that we that can wait to when uh, to, to when the time is more appropriate. And that comes, and that brings me to the, the second part of right speech is that not only do we not want to do those four things, but there are things that we really would want to do instead. And um, I'm going to give it to you a couple of different ways. First, I want to start with three gates. They're called, they're called the three gates. The, in, in Zen Buddhism, they like to act like there are roads and there are doors, and they, they, that's what they call them. But it's just three things. It's a checklist. 
three things that you should check before you decide to have a conversation with someone. And one is what you're going to say true, you know, because we don't lie. Two, does it really need to be said? I mean, is it something that you could just live with and let it go? If yes, then you have to go to the third one. Will, can you say it in a kindly fashion? And if the third one is yes, then go ahead. Now you, you pass through the, the three gates. You can go ahead. You can continue on and do what you need to do. But if one of those things is a no, then you have to stop. It's this. No. Right? But as long as those three things are true, you're fine. Another type of speech that comes under idle chatter is gloating and bragging and talking about ourselves in a, in a, in a bombastic manner. We're Buddhist, so being humble is probably, you know, part of, is, you know, they, they, when you think of Buddhists, you think of people who are bald and walking around in robes and kind of wearing sandals a lot and stuff, and you think that we are humble people. But really, Buddhism, just like every other ism, has hierarchy and categories and groups. You know, one group thinks that they're better than the other. One one monk thinks he's better than another monk, you know, um, there's a head monk, there's, you know, different levels of lieutenant monks, for example. Um, and all of these people have their own egos. I would rather you brag and boast about yourself than put yourself down. That's the truth. But I think the best thing to do is to just love yourself in relative silence, you know. Know that you are all of these things. Um, I like uh, Kumo D a lot. He used to, you know, how you like me now, or I go to work. These are all very boastful raps, and I used to just, I love those things. But, and they're fun. And I can think those things about myself all day long. I put a smile on my face when I'm going on my daily walk. I, I can do that. I turn it on, you know, maybe get a little bounce in my step or whatever. But I try not to share that with other people because when we are in the presence of other people, our concern should be about their comfort. And this is how we speak kindly. If we're concerned about their comfort, we're not talking about us so much. How are you? We're doing deep listening. We're concerned about them. It's not about me. This one's uh, going to run long, so I'm going to do deep listening in the next one. And thank you for your attention. A um, couple of people I want to thank by name. One is Ken, living that Chiang Mai life over there in Thailand. We miss you and love you, Ken. Thank you for subscribing and sharing this, these videos. One is Day. She lives actually, she's my um, neighbor. She um, does nightly food videos. She goes live on Instagram. You should check her out. Um, I'll try to link her information in the in the comments or in the words below below the video. And thank you all. This has been fun for me. And I'll see you in the next one.